Ladies and gentlemen, children of the interwebs, it's Sebastian Envy, the strong style nerd, strong style cinephile. Flash, I'm not surprised or even mad, I'm just disappointed. Let's geek about that for a few minutes here. So at the tail end of last week's episode of The Flash, we saw Nora emerge from the negative speed force, all red-eyed and evil, and who was more excited than me? Nobody. I spoke it into existence, full-on evil Nora, driven over the edge by her desire to save her dad for the greater good. But no, it was not meant to be. The episode saw Nora working with Ragdoll, Bug-Eyed Mandit, and Weather Witch to steal some high-tech, plot-convenient, science-y stuff. They first needed to steal some stuff from Star Labs, as well as kidnap Sisko, and they ended up kidnapping Sherlock. We see an exchange between Barry and Nora where her evilness kicks in and she knocks him away with a burst of negative speed force lightning. Meanwhile, Caitlin and Ralph check on her father's Arctic lab. They share an awkward moment where Ralph thinks that Caitlin is coming on to him, but they also learn that the prototypes for Sisko's metahuman cure are missing. Sisko has been tasked by the rogues with hacking Spencer Young's hypnophone metatech device for nefarious purposes. Now, as he works, he and Sherlock bond over their love lives and keeping things secret. Sherlock knows his lady is a meta, but she hasn't told him herself. Sisko, of course, has not told his social media official girlfriend that he is a meta. Sherlock voices what we've all been saying ourselves, that Sisko doesn't want to be vibe, tied to the fact that Carlos Valdez doesn't want to be on Flash anymore as well. Meanwhile, the villains move on to the weapons tech uh, heist. There's a double cross there against Nora, with the villains taking hostages and threatening to kill them, and the Flash doesn't show up and reveal his identity. The Flash does, but it's a Sherlock-controlled hologram. Team Flash, Joe and Iris, reveal themselves as guards, and they foil the villains in short order, with Barry and Nora coming back together following a heart-to-heart -heart conversation, which I knew it would be, but I still did not care for it to be. Nora later makes her intentions known that she was stealing tech to build the only weapon that could destroy Cicada's dagger. Barry says he wouldn't have believed her, but now he's on her side, and even though it's Thawne's plan that they're using, he's down for it anyway. Now, at that moment, Caitlin and Ralph return and tell them that Cicada stole prototypes of Cisco's cure, and the tech stolen in the last episode will enable the Cicada 2 to disperse the virus all over the city to kill all metas. Meanwhile, we see Grace working on the device, reciting a rhyme she used to with the original Cicada, who we see on screen, but is clearly just something in her head. That was the episode. And again, like I said, I was disappointed. I knew it was gonna happen. I knew that they were just gonna wrap up this rift between Barry and Iris and Nora, mostly between Barry and Nora, in the span of like one heart-to-heart -heart conversation, some bobble-headed, you know, teary-eyed action from Grant Gustin, because that's his style. He just is, like, I can't unsee that from that honest trailers where it talks about him just his head bobbling around. So, like, I just can't unsee it. That's what he does, truly. And it just, I wanted Evil Nora. I wanted her just driven over the edge by the greater good to take more and more drastic actions to save her dad. Manipulated by Thawne, um, but here we are. I'm wondering if she's gonna end up tapping into the negative speed force um, in the episode after next, because I think Cicada should be wrapped up in this next episode, the girl with the red lightning, I think it's called, where she makes the threat with the metahumans we see in the next promo, where the police station serves as asylum for a bunch of metahumans to get out from under this uh, threat. So Cicada 2 should be wrapped up, and then a, um, a uh, synopsis of the season finale says, it, alludes to Barry tangling with his first and, you know, most consistent, persistent nemesis, Reverse Flash. So, Thawne will get out, he'll get back to the past or the current, you know, 2019, and he'll throw down with Barry. And then I think that Nora will, Barry will be overwhelmed and Nora will end up tapping into the negative speed force and using it actually against Thawne to beat him or something, something like that. Or maybe she'll start to and then Barry will have some kind of heart to heart little Thing with her that motivates her to use the power of the good speed force over the negative speed force to cancel it out or so it's it's totally something cw would do right this episode also highlighted another disappointment for me that's been with the flash since the beginning and that is the handling of the rogues the rogues to me although i'm not a huge avid flash reader i've read some stuff here and there um i like the idea of the rogues his his adversaries uh, are akin to the rogues gallery for uh, Batman, the rogues gallery for Spider-Man as far as um, just cool, interesting, quirky personalities and just cool costumes and designs and they're just, they're on par with Batman and Spider-Man villains and they've been handled in the comics um, very, very well and I like this whole like coming together more out of uh, business purposes um, to help each other when convenient for them. I like the rules that they kind of set in this little criminal fraternity for themselves that they abide by. And if you, know, you don't, you get kicked out. And that sort of thing, I just like that. We thought 
we were going that way when we got Captain Cold and we got Heat Wave. And then over the years, we've gotten, you know, Mirror Master at the top, Pie Piper, and some other uh, villains along the way. They just haven't handled them. And I know that, of course, Captain Cold and Heat Wave got shuttled off to Legends of Tomorrow, and I don't regret that because they've been awesome on that show, but it just, they were a disappointment on The Flash. And The Flash has never, outside of a couple team ups here and there between the rogues, mostly, you know, like this episode, they haven't just done the rogues justice and they haven't really cared to, I don't think. If they really wanted to, they could give us a nice rogue story. And that would be like when people were complaining about Speedster, 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 as far as like the big bad, and then we got the thinker and the thinker sucked. They could have done something with the rogues and just broken it up into sections of episodes with the different rogues and have the rogues come together um, in the end for you know their squabble with the flash i mean there's so many different ways they could have done it if they wanted to do it and that's been the problem they haven't wanted to give us the rogues um, they've just been made them one and done throwaway type of villains and you know they run through them like that and we're left with where we're at now where we're in you know several years later We've gone through all these rogues, and it's like, okay, what's left as far as villains go? I mean, I know that's the kind of setup of TV. They're not exactly built to have them come back and be as recurring as they are in the comics. They could if they wanted to, but here we are. So it was just a disappointment on the Nora front and a disappointment on the rogues front yet again. But I guess that's just what we have to accept at this point. Like I said, we've got two episodes left. We wrap up Cicada grace hopefully answer the question of just how and maybe that ties into thon's plans of how she ends up with a time machine to come from the future to the past that's i don't know if that's going to be something where they're just the writers are like crap and we'll have like two sentences in the next episode where she says oh i got the time machine from this and i did this to wrap it up because we haven't got anything about that like nobody's like question how she ended up with the trouble bubble and coming through you know back to the past i'd really like to know the answer to that and whether or not it gets wrapped in with Thawne's plan. And of course, Cisco, uh, we are, as soon as he came up with the metahuman cure, we knew it was gonna get turned uh, into a plot device uh, where he's gonna feel bad for making it because it's gonna be immediately turned into a weapon against metahumans, of which that he is, even though he doesn't wanna be. And I saw it on one of the message boards I go to, somebody posed the idea of, you know, watch, he's gonna make some sort of heroic sacrifice throwing himself on the, the device or having all the uh, anti-metahuman virusy stuff flowing into him and saves everybody else, but then takes his powers and then he's gone. He, he's no longer vibe. He can go up, you know, live happily ever after with his social media official girlfriend. He can still come back in the crisis because he can use his mind to contribute, not necessarily powers. So that's how I think that's gonna go with Cisco. But like I said, I'm totally for them. Um, thinning down the numbers of the people on the show to give greater focus to some people they haven't, as well as just making it uh, a better show, a, a tighter narrative all around. We'll see who else leaves in the next two episodes and into next season what happens. But anyway, those are some of my thoughts on it. More importantly, what do you guys out there think about this past episode of The Flash? Are you disappointed that Nora is just all good again? And uh, what do you think about the plot with Cicada 2, with Cisco leaving, all that fun stuff? going on let's talk about it social media is below there so talk to me on there on this youtube channel here there everywhere let's geek 